Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. The various accents of the Caribbean are loved by many for their chill, laid-back vibe. To many people, the definitive Caribbean accent has to be none other than the Jamaican accent. This accent is deeply popular and has become linked with the likes of relaxing beaches, Rastafarianism, and of course, reggae music. One Bob Marley, to many, may be the most beloved proprietor of this accent. Of course, this accent and this nation are way more than just a series of tropes and stereotypes types that I just laid out there, but I'm sure you understand where I'm coming from with all this. The Jamaican accent is one that is loved by just so many people. In fact, Big 7 Travel, whoever they are, listed the Jamaican accent as the world's 17th sexiest accent, nestled between the Yorkshire and Danish accent. That puts the likes of Bob Marley with the likes of Sean Bean and Mads Mikkelsen. Pleasant company to be with, that's for sure. Away from its relaxed vibe, however, Jamaica is an island with a pretty interesting interesting history, for better and worse. Like the majority of the Americas slash the New World, the modern nation of Jamaica is one founded on colonization. In the island's past, not one, but two major European powers had control. This means that the people and accent found on the island today have been heavily influenced by this history. A native on the island 1000 years ago would be incredibly different to a native of the island today. This all ties into that accent too of course. The modern classic Jamaican accent is not entirely of native origins, rather it was shaped by the history people, languages and voices have all called this island home over the years. All of this, the good, bad and very ugly, came together to give us the modern Jamaican accent that is loved by so many to this day. However, it's worth noting that this is more than just an accent. The official language of Jamaica is English. This of course led to the creation of a unique version of English called Jamaican English, in the same way we have American English, Australian English and so on. However, there's also the Jamaican Patois too. This is a Creole language heavily inspired by English and other languages that we'll cover in a moment, that has very much become the de facto language of the nation. This is a very relaxed language and its pronunciation and written form are heavily inspired by the accent. While it is different to Jamaican English, the exact point of difference between these two aren't too clear. One source explained that Jamaican English is more often used in schools and business, while Patois is used within the home and among friends. This is something we see with other Creole languages around this part of the world too. While that may be what language is like in the nation now, it would take quite some time to reach this point. The first humans to settle the island were the Taino people. It's it's believed they came from South America to the island around two and a half thousand years ago. They spoke, among other things, a language now referred to as Taino slash classic Taino. As to what their accent would have sounded like, we don't seem to know. However, it's safe to assume that they may have sounded somewhat similar to other native tribes of South America, as that's where they came from initially. While they were the first humans to settle the island, it does not seem like their accent had a particularly strong lasting effect on Jamaica other than a few words like guava in example, a fruit grown on the island. Why is this the case? Well, it's because when the Spanish discovered the island for themselves, they made pretty quick work on the native Taino people. The Spanish used them as slave labor and even more horrifically killed and tortured them. Many of the Taino that escaped these fates would often go on to perish from diseases that the Europeans brought with them that the Taino had no natural defenses towards. What the Spanish Empire did to the Taino people was truly horrendous. This is why their accent and language has had such a small impact on modern Jamaican. Columbus first landed in Jamaica in 1495, and by 1509 the island was under Spanish rule and going by the name of Santiago. Does this mean that Spanish is the first key influence on the modern Jamaican accent? Well, not quite. Despite being under Spanish rule, Spain didn't actually do all that much with the island. They didn't see that much potential in the land and used the island primarily as a supply base. The towns they had on the island were little more than minor settlements. This is why Spanish didn't play much of a role in shaping the popular accent, as there wasn't much Spanish actually being spoken on the island. 
land. This is a stark difference to the nearby nation of Cuba, which is very much a Spanish-speaking nation. Spain's lack of attention to Jamaica led to a lot of internal strife, and ultimately made an easier target for other empires to claim as their own. One empire that had eyes on the island was of course the British Empire. They saw the failing Spanish rule of Jamaica as a chance to strike and did exactly that. In 1655, the British launched an attack on the Spanish rule Jamaica and easily captured the island for themselves. It was under British rule that rapid change started to come in Jamaica, including the formation of that beloved accent. Undoubtedly, the biggest impact the British had on language in Jamaica is with the importation of the English language. As mentioned, English and its Jamaican variants are still the official and most widely spoken language on the island to this day. It's a language that stuck its claws into many parts of the world, big and small, and Jamaica is no exception. The British Empire, however, also exported another accent onto the island too, that being various West African accents. The slave trade is unfortunately ever present when talking about the history of the new world, and Jamaica was no exception to this. Under the British Empire, the island of Jamaica became very profitable, primarily from growing crops such as tobacco, cocoa, and of course sugar on many plantations across the island. These plantations of course needed people to work the land. And like the Empire did so often, they exported slaves from Africa to do the heavy lifting. West Africa was the part of Africa that the British went to most often for slaves, primarily because it was the easiest part of the continent to reach and the closest to Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. Driven from the mainland to the heart of the Caribbean, the forced sea travels and lives of these West African people would have been one of pain and sadness, taken away from their homes and forced to work for next to nothing, fighting on arrival, fighting for survival. That's his best song by the way. It's dreadful that these people were brought to Jamaica, but they were here, and their accent heavily inspired the modern Jamaican accent. In fact, it is perhaps the biggest influence on the accent, at least in regards to sound anyway. Many modern West African accents and the Jamaican accent are incredibly similar sounding. Of course, West Africa is a huge swath of land filled with many countries today. It seems incredibly dismissive to label it as just West African. It seems one of the biggest West African influences on Jamaican was the Akan accent. The Akan people and their language are still present in West Africa. They don't have a country unto themselves. They primarily live in modern day Ghana and the Ivory Coast. West African accents not only shaped Jamaica, but so much of the Caribbean, all due to the dark chapter in human history that is the slave trade. And it was this trade that heavily helped shape the beloved accent we know today. This means that the two biggest influences on the Jamaican accent are English and various West African accents. However, there's actually a third key player in all of this. It's one I had no idea about, but found extremely fascinating. That being the Irish accent. Irish is seen as being one of the key influences of the Jamaican accent, and as I said prior to researching this video, this is something I knew nothing about, and I just find it so interesting. Gaelic and the Caribbean are not two things I really see as being connected, but here we have it. It's more than just the accent too it seems. Irish and Jamaican culture are seen as being pretty similar too. These are two island nations, both characterised by outsiders as having pretty laid back demeanours. But how did such a large influx of Irish people arrive in Jamaica? Well, unsurprisingly, this is another dark chapter in world history. As mentioned, when plantations started sprouting up across the island, the British needed workers. And before they brought over West African slaves, they brought over Irish people. This was under the rule of Oliver Cromwell. Cromwell is a particularly disliked figure in Ireland, and this is one of the many reasons why. Many of the Irish sent to Jamaica were convicts, but not of crimes severe enough to be sent across the Atlantic for. However, other Irish people did migrate to Jamaica out of choice. Suffice to say, the climate of Ireland is just a bit different to the climate of Jamaica, and most of these Irish people would not have ever experienced such extreme heat. This heat led to the death of many of them. Many of the Irish forced to this island became known as Red Legs due to 
the impact the sun had on their fair skin on their legs. Cromwell's solution to the Irish not being able to withstand the heat was to instead of sending adult convicts over to Jamaica, was to send Irish children over instead. He believed that children, due to being younger, would be able to adapt to the heat better. Cromwell sent around 2,000 10 to 14 year old children from Ireland to Jamaica. Like I said, he's not a very popular figure in the Emerald Isles, and it's easy to see why. This led to Ireland having a huge impact on Jamaica, including Irish place names and surnames being pretty commonplace, even to this day. Around 25% of modern Jamaicans also claim Irish ancestry. For better and worse, the Irish were in Jamaica, and they would be followed by the West Africans. Over the years, these two groups of people would intermix and live among one another in Jamaica. The accent sense of Ireland and West Africa, along with a heavy dose of British English from their British Empire rulers, would go on to form what we know today as the modern Jamaican accent. It wouldn't be until 1962 that Jamaica achieved independence. While no longer under British rule, Jamaica found itself heavily influenced by another English-speaking nation, the USA. This was all due to proximity to the land. This has led to American English being another influence on the Jamaican accent, albeit a minor one. So, to answer the question in the title of this video, where did the Jamaican accent come from? Well, it came from an awful lot of places. From my tally, around six languages slash accents played a role in creating the modern Jamaican accent, three of those being a major influence and three of those being a minor influence. Those three major influences are British English, various West African accents, and Irish. And those three minor influences are Taino, Spanish, and American English. The bloodshed and slavery in this nation's past is undoubtedly unfortunate, and something that should not be glossed over. I really hope I've done a good enough job emphasising that in this video. I have another video about British and Spanish place names in Jamaica, which covers a lot of similar grounds as this video has, so please do go watch that one if you haven't already. But it's due to this history, the good and the bad, and a huge variety of voices that have called this island home, that led to the birth of this seriously beloved accent. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.